Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking a look at Zubuntu 18.04. Now this is the XFCE member of the Ubuntu family and it comes out every six months, but every two years they bring out a long-term support release designed so that there's not as much maintenance required and you can keep a system on your computer for significantly longer without having to uh, reinstall it or do a huge major upgrade. So we can expect a certain number of people to be picking up LTS distributions rather than the six months monthly cycles and this means that the um, eight uh, the 1804 releases of the Ubuntu distributions are somewhat worth uh, checking out specifically because there are going to be uh, more people adopting them than for example say the 1810 releases um, now this and also this is you know these these releases these LTS releases often set the pace for what Linux might look like over the course of the next two years this is the this is the base that a lot of people are going to be working off of, so it's definitely worth knowing what it's all about. Now, XFCE has a pretty large following here in the Linux community, and you can see why. The consistent design and the modularity of it all uh, really just makes XFCE that kind of desktop environment that fits like a glove, and especially after a couple of months of trying it, once you've replaced some of the applets that you don't necessarily use or, or want, and, uh, and, and once you've grown into a distribution, um, XFCE really is some, you know, it, 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 it feels like home really does. And I can see why distributions like Manjaro uh, use it, specifically Manjaro, because they've got a very um, fast moving engine under the hood. And it's nice to have that, that consistent UI on top of it um, to just sort of, you know, sail as steady as possible, um, given the mechanics beneath. Now, um, this is not a rolling release. This is, of course, scheduled six monthly releases. So that issue isn't necessarily in play here. However, I suppose the philosophy might still be. Anyway, that aside, let's take a look at this. So I've put this onto a virtual machine, been playing around with it for the past uh, couple of days now. So I will be probably, you know, only touching on a few of the key points that I've uh, picked up on, and I'm probably going to miss some uh, some of the things here. So uh, I'll link to the release notes down in the description below because there are a lot of them. There's a lot of upgrades here and um, and I, yeah, like I say, in this short video, I'm not going to be able to cover them all. In fact, to be honest, I'm probably not even going to be able to cover them all in the, you know, in the sort of the two days that I spent uh, playing around with this distribution. So anyway, let's kick off with the applets in the taskbar here, because this is uh, the, the new stuff that caught my attention the first. First off is notifications. We have um, queued notifications now, which is really, really good, which means if you you know set your computer to do something and then go off and make a cup of tea or have lunch or something and come back, you can see um, all of the notifications waiting for you. You can also have the little do not disturb thing here. That's really, really, really useful for people like streamers and and people that record uh, videos for YouTube. So, um, so yeah, I'm I'm certainly going to be particularly appreciative of that. Mail applet. Uh, I don't use a local mail client, so I've got to say this one isn't necessarily something that I can reflect on personally. But you know, it's it's a notify. It's a mail notify. Uh, does what it says on the tin. Uh, Bluetooth applet. Um, it makes sense to. Um, to include that um, because people use Bluetooth. Um, network Manager, this is the standard network manager that comes with uh, almost all distributions that aren't based on KDE. It seems really good. Uh, we've got the presentation mode on the Power Manager settings. Again, really, really useful, particularly if you're watching something like a YouTube video uh, that's not in full screen and you uh, you don't want to have the screensaver interrupt you, or heaven forbid, should you be doing a presentation? <laughs> So, uh, so there's that now, there, and also there is the um, volume applet, which is um, particularly uh, impressive now because you can actually micromanage all your um, your sound devices. You've got the Pro Media Player applet there, and then you can just pop into the pulse audio volume control settings here, which are a fantastic set of controls. Um, they actually let you completely micromanage all your audio devices. In fact, if you go into um, configuration, you can actually disable uh, devices or even parts of devices. So for example, uh, this headset here has a drop down microphone. This little microphone here, it's really not very good. It's really designed for 
you know, if you're playing a few games with your friends, that's fine. It's not record or broadcast quality. So um, I just completely disable it, and that way there is no application that's going to accidentally pick up the microphone uh, if I misselect it or, or what have you. Uh, and the same goes for the webcam microphone as well. Uh, the webca webcam microphone, it just really isn't a very good quality microphone. It picks up all the reverberation in the room. So, uh, you know, this little... Um, uh, what's this? The blue snowball. That's it. Um, pretty good microphone actually as well. Um, so yeah, basically the blue snowball is the only microphone that I've got activated on my, you know, in my sound profiles, and therefore there is no sort of way that I'm going to mistakenly misselect in OBS or something like that. So that's pretty good. Yeah, OBS just gives you all of these amazing controls. Um, yeah, everything that you could possibly need, it seems, or so everything that I see, everything that I need, and I probably make pretty good use of of, of it. So, I'm going to pull up uh, Thunar. Thunar is really one of my favourite uh, file managers. It's snappy, it's intuitive. Uh, I mean, file managers aren't particularly complex pieces of software, but um, but yeah, this is um, this is it. And I got to say, yeah, it looks pretty nice. I I do like the core bird theme. I've always had a soft spot for the core bird theme, and I also quite like the uh, Linux Mint Scray bird theme, uh, uh, green bird theme. I don't know. Uh, it, Linux Mint has a slight variation on this, which is also quite nice. So, comes with the Firefox browser. Um, what version is this? Just out of the box. This is fifty nine oh two, and I think this version of Firefox is ported to GTK three, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So. There is that. So let's take a look at the software store. Now this is the GNOME software store. It's a really good software store included with most, if not all, of the Ubuntu distributions. And uh, yeah, because it's just a simple, you know, you just click on it um, and you know, install. It's uh, it's great for browsing. It's great for uh, for you know, usability. And um, and in fact, down here at the bottom, it tells you the source. Of all of your applications here so this one actually the source is from the snap store which is quite interesting um, and um, so you can actually install the the snap version of Firefox now if you take a look at an application like OBS now OBS studio is um, an application that I use a lot because of course it is a fantastic piece of recording and streaming software. Uh, this is included from the Snap Store as well, despite the fact that there is a candidate in the distro's native repository. So it's interesting that they chose the Snap version to push, but I suppose considering Snap is the um, is the exciting new technology, I can see why they might do that. Um, and I can uh, and I think in previous. Um, versions that I've I've had a look at with Ubuntu, uh, they do include the Snap version and the native version in the store. And it can be a little bit confusing because it's not necessarily, you have to sort of scroll down to the bottom of the page to really see the key differences. And it's, yeah, it makes a lot more sense from a UI point of view, especially if you're taking into consideration uh, newer users uh, to only have one version of each piece of software in the, uh, in the app store. But yeah, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this because like, it's straightforward, it's user-friendly. There don't appear to have been any major updates to it, and um, it's seen in just about every other um, every other distro, actually. I think most distros either use the GNOME software manager or they use the, the elementary one, from what I've seen, or, or Snaptic, maybe. So, um, so yeah. Also, one of the things that I have noticed in the Software Center that I really quite like is this permissions button um, that allows you to manage the permissions and access permissions of some of the applications in um, on, on your machine, which is pretty darn cool. Okay, so I think that's about it for this video. Although I do have to say, I feel like I'm probably missing a few nifty tricks that Zubuntu probably still has up its sleeve. But um, overall, it's... It is the Zubuntu that we've come to know and love. It's consistent, it's modular, uh, it provides a really quite a good looking user experience out of the box, and um, and it just works. And uh, it's it's got a you know it's got a significant following in the Linux community for a very good reason. So I gotta say I've I've been giving this some thought into. Um, into whether or not this might be a uh, you know whether or not this might have a permanent home on on one of my machines. 
the competition is pretty tough, and this new batch of Ubuntu based uh, this this new batch of Ubuntu distributions is really promising, and that's specific. That's particularly good because, of course, these are long term support releases, and therefore they're going to be in the public eye for significantly uh, a longer period of time. So. Yes, promising stuff indeed. Very thrilled about this. So thank you very much for watching. And um, if any of the guys from the Zubuntu dev team are watching, thank you. It's amazing what you've done here. I'm incredibly impressed and grateful for all of your fantastic hard work. Thank you so much. So until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.